Hey there, welcome to the GPU hierarchy. I'm going to rebrand my channel because there's a lot of people calling their channel Gaming Bench. So this is now the GPU hierarchy. My aim long term is to show the performance of a bunch of different modern graphics cards from the highest end to the lowest end. That will take a lot of time, a lot of testing, but today I'm looking at ASRock's ARC B580 Steel Legend OC. The OC is for a factory overclock and it's a bit of a misnomer because while the official graphics clock is higher than Intel's default 2670 megahertz, the boost clock is the same, 2850 megahertz. And what that means is all of these ARC B580 cards out of the box are basically running at 2.85 gigahertz and so they all perform about the same. What happens when you factory overclock? Well, I can tell you. Tools built into Intel's latest drivers allow you to tweak the voltage and the power limit and also the clock speed of the GPU. You can also change the VRAM speed and change the fan curve. The most important of these is going to be the clock speed because ARC B580 is not running anywhere near its power limit. Voltage might help a little bit, but voltage increases power use a lot and heat a lot and while it can overcome instability to a certain degree ultimately you usually end up with a hard limit where you're really not going to push past that without liquid nitrogen or something extreme. ASRock's ARC B580 I was able to push the memory overclock to only 19.5 gigabits per second compared to a base of 19 gigabits per second. That's a 2.6 percent overclock. That is very limited. To make that clear, like games that are bandwidth limited, you're going to see less than a 3% improvement by overclocking. If you can get a higher overclock out of your card's memory, great. This card did not. For the graphics core, I was able to push that up by 150 megahertz in the control panel in the Intel graphics settings, whatever you call that app. But that actually gave it a 200 megahertz offset in practice. As soon as I engaged manual overclocking, it seemed like the drivers or the card unlocked 50 megahertz higher than the default stock 2850 limit. So we end up with 3050 megahertz instead of 2850 megahertz. And I will show you the numbers at the end of average clock speeds while testing. The fact is all of the games that I tested were pretty much at that limit. So stock 2850 overclocked 3050. That is a 7% overclock. That means, despite what you're probably hearing at some places that don't know what they're talking about, your overclock, manual overclock of this card is going to get you about 7% at most, unless you get a cherry card that overclocks better than what I'm getting. Some people are saying they got 3.2 gigahertz. I did not see that with stability at all. I saw crashes at 3,100 megahertz. So if I bumped my manual overclock from 150 to 200, that ended up giving a 250 megahertz boost, and that would be 3.1 gigahertz, and I saw crashes and corruption and instability. There is luck of the draw, but let's go ahead and look at the numbers. I have the same 10 games I used in the main review, and the only difference here is that I've got overclocked numbers along with everything else. They're in light blue instead of the regular blue, and I have the other five competing cards. RTX 4060, RX 7600 XT, RX 7600, the previous generation ARC A770 16GB card, and NVIDIA's previous generation RTX 3060 12GB card. Blackmyth Wukong saw about a 2-3% improvement in performance. Went from 22 to 23 frames per second on average. That's not a lot. And that's going to be similar in most of these games. I'm testing at 1440p because A, that was where ARC B580 performed best relative to the competition, even if this game only shows 20-something frames per second. You can tweak settings and do other things, but this is just the baseline. This pushes the card to its limit, so I'm not CPU limited. Next up, Dragon Age The Veil Guard went from 48 to 51 frames per second. 3 frames per second extra, about a 6% boost. That is pretty much the maximum we should see. 7% was the core overclocked, so 6% in Dragon Age the Veil Guard indicates that even though I didn't increase the memory bandwidth much, 
that isn't really holding the card back. And maybe that's because the L2 cache, L1 cache is part of that overclock of the GPU core. Final Fantasy 16, this game is a beast to run. Runs very poorly, like Black Myth Wukong as well. The overclock went from 24 to 25 frames per second. One FPS more, about 4%. Microsoft Flight Simulator 2024. This game is probably going to be CPU limited on lesser systems, but I've got a 13900K and that's not CPU limited. I got 40 compared to 39 frames per second. Now that I'm not showing decimal points here, so that's only about a two to 3% improvement. If it were 38.5 and it improved to 40.4, then it might be closer to that five, 6% range but the point is, it's not really noticeable. God of War Ragnarok. This shows a 10% improvement. That's probably a bit of an outlier. Maybe I had a good run on my testing with Overclock compared to a poor run when I was doing the original stock performance, because 10%, while that's a nicer overclock and might actually be noticeable, I only have a 7% core overclock, so I shouldn't see 10%, but there's margin of error in these types of tests you can get about 1% lower or 1% higher, maybe even 2% in some cases. So let's take the 2%. If I got a good run and it was 2% faster than average, and I got a bad run at stock that was 2% lower than average, combine that with the 7% core overclock and we're right there at 10%. I would expect this is more like 7%. It's probably purely GPU core limited. MechWarrior 5 Clans. Unreal Engine 5 also sees a relatively small two frames per second improvement in performance. That is about 6%, as expected. Star Wars Outlaws. This game still crashes with Intel's current drivers, but I assume that will get fixed in the near future because the A770 is not crashing, or at least it's not crashing nearly as often. 35 to 38 frames per second. We're looking at roughly a 7% improvement means we're GPU core limited. Stalker 2, 33 to 35, 2 FPS, about 6%. Warhammer 40,000 Space Marine 2, we went from 54 to 57 frames per second, again about 6%. One last game, Witchfire, early access, but so be it. 76 versus 72 frames per second, four frames per second difference, but we are at higher frames per second to start with, so that's still only about 6%. So across the board, we're seeing pretty close to 6% improvement on average. And if we go ahead and look at the overall performance change across all 10 games, we went from 38 frames per second to 40 frames per second. A two frames per second difference, about 5%, give or take. What about power use? Well, things didn't change that much, even with all the tweaks that I tried to do. Average power use at 1440p Ultra went from 156 watts at stock to 167 watts overclocked. 11 watts higher, that's maybe a 7% decrease if you want, because higher power is worse, right? Clock speeds. Here you can see the average across all 10 games. And we had 2850 stock, 3049. That means there were a couple of games that were running a little bit lower than the maximum 3050, but really not by much. And GPU temperatures, this one is interesting because it shows what my manual tweaking did. I boosted fan speed curves just to try and keep the card cool and stable. And because the fan's spinning faster, it actually dropped the temperature 11 degrees. You could do that without the overclock. It will make more noise. So it's a trade-off. Anyway, that's it. Overclocking of Arc B580. It is not super impressive. I've seen 200 megahertz overclocks out of a lot of GPUs over the years, and that's not super uncommon. A lot of times, I see higher memory overclocks than what Intel is getting from the B580. 
I mean, I had instability at 20 gigabits per second, which would have been about a 5 or 6% overclock compared to the 19.5 that I was able to run with stability. That's not amazing. That's not awesome. It's not the end of the world. Just know what you're getting into. Anyone thinking the dual 8-pin power connectors on the ASRock Steel Legend OC are going to make a big difference and you're going to be able to overclock farther? Well, maybe you can overclock further if you have liquid nitrogen and you do some extreme stuff because then you really can deliver a lot more power than the 150 watt per connector. But I don't know that extreme overclocking of ARC B580 is really that useful. If you want to put that much effort into overclocking, do it for fun, sure. Otherwise, just go and buy a faster card. You know, if you're looking at ARC B580 at $350, I would definitely look at an RX 7700 XT instead because it has the same amount of memory and way better performance overall and better drivers. Thanks for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.